Well, we just uh, jumped in. I'm going to do most of the talking uh, because I'm more fluent in English. But this is mostly about stuff which uh, yeah, we, uh, we developed in Germany and which has been fundamental, fundamental importance. Um, I think I mentioned it briefly yesterday who runs an insurance agency in Germany. Um, he has helped many of the German pharmacists get accounted for uh, their uh, contracts. So it's sort of a bit the German version of Rudy Hoffman, if maybe with a bit less flamboyant colors, and you see the other guy. <laughs> and so I'll just try to summarize what came out of our working relationship and sort of the main points uh, to keep in mind with regards to insurance and crowns. So let me start with the really basic stuff. Uh, many of you might know this already, but I thought it's well, worthwhile to summarize it. There is several different ways to uh, finance your chronic arrangements. Obviously, uh, Max uh, mentioned a couple. You can just simply prepay, or you can set up a trust. But that's not something which most of us are able or willing to do. So the very standard way to finance chronic arrangement is through insurance. And it is different types of insurance. The first is term life insurance. So the way term life insurance goes is you sign up for the insurance. Um, it has a fixed period uh, of term uh, of time, that's why it's called term, say 20, 30, 40 years. You're covered for risk of death from all causes during this time with a couple of exceptions. Uh, usually they don't cover war or terrorism. And uh, suicide is precluded in the first three years. So if you want to kill yourself, then <laughs> only after three years. Not um, um, well, that's a really different topic if you think of uh, 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 in case you're terminally ill. In that case, it might be very beneficial. So, um, but anyway, so, the big advantage of this insurance, it's very easy to set up. There's a health check, so that might cause difficulties, but in case you pass that, you're insured at a very low premium. I, for example, uh, I also have an insurance premium. It runs to 200,000 uh, euros, and I pay 20 euros a month. The downside is, it's a term insurance, so it will expire after 20 years, and then become worthless. So this insurance is only sort of, it's an intermediate solution to finance you for the first years. It is especially popular with students, right? Because they don't have high income yet, but they are pretty optimistic that they will have higher income later in their life. So to, uh, because just to uh, <coughs> finance chronics for, let's say, 20, the first 10, 20 years as they finish their studies and begin their career, it's a very wonderful solution, but you also always need to keep in mind that after it expires, you need to have some other means of financing that you uh, The second type of insurance is the full insurance, uh, basically a capitalized life insurance. This is much more expensive. Um, however, it provides unlimited coverage, basically from the time you sign it you have coverage, and then there is this phase where you pay into it, and after, say, 30, 35 years, you fully paid into it, and at that time, the full amount necessary for funding has been saved up, and can be then either used to prepay, uh, to put into a trust, or whatever. So at that point, you're covered. What we don't have in Germany is the usual way of financing, which is done in the US, which is whole life or universal life. This is a sort of bound, limitless insurance, where there's no fixed end date at which the insurance pays out. You pay premiums throughout your whole life until uh, yeah, uh, until you either call the insurance or uh, until you die. Yeah. Uh, many uh, insurance companies closed uh, this uh, insurance. Uh, what wasn't the, uh, the problem is the cost. Yeah, as it is not so bad to have insurance to run to end of the life. This will be the best when the price will be good. But uh, the problem was in the, in the um, some years ago that the uh, uh, insurance, uh, the people they have the insurance, they see this, the costs will.
will be not um, interesting for the future. So they said, okay, in, we closed this insurance and now we have only uh, these two parts, capital insurance and life insurance. The cost you mean uh, premium? Uh, yes, the premium um, with the cost inside and the, uh, uh, um, the returns. returns will be not um, in a way, universal life worked because there was very high uh, interest rates baked into the products of say 8%. These are not achievable in current market conditions. So that's why at least in yeah. Germany, the and they closed. Insurance. The insurance company closed. And, yeah. and so, but that means you do have options yeah. and uh, you should sort of consider, I mean, for me personally, I feel uh, I have term life insurance and I'm saving money on the side. So uh, to be ready for the time when the term life insurance expires. Um, with the life insurance, so if, you, if you die, you know, right, you know, something right after having signed the contract, you are still covered by it. Yes, and, uh, unless of course this is due unless to some pre-consisting yeah, condition yeah, which you hit on the insurance company. Yeah. In that case, of course, they would but uh, in general, these insurances, I mean, many of the modern ones, and there's like stuff you should look out for. Uh, for example, the, the insurance uh, you get to Udo, uh, if you're diagnosed as terminal by a doctor with an expected life ex uh, expectancy of less than <coughs> six months, you can already take out the money, which can be very useful in case you've overfunded, for example, to relocate uh, to the US or to uh, next to your chronics provider or to cover some additional costs. Yeah, this is a, a, like another question. You can, uh, with this type of insurance, you can decide that they end up whether to move to cryonics, alcohol, maybe a future European. Uh, uh, yes, uh, that's, that's, mm -hmm. yours. that's the other advantage of this sort of financing, but actually that's true with all types of financing, right? If you have the money, uh, uh, both uh, Calico and CI, I'm sure Creos as well, although I don't know for certain, uh, allow you to take the, uh, the insurance and then move it to a different provider. So setting up the, that's why I always tell people, you know, I'm in contact with quite a few people who want to sign up with Cryonics and they often ask, okay, so what if a new provider in Europe sets up, what if I'm unhappy with the current one, I think I'll wait on the whole thing. And I tell, you know, fine, if you want to wait on signing up with a provider, that's that's your choice, but get insurance now, right? Because your health will not usually get better over life, it will deteriorate. So you might, so you can get, in, in case you're younger, you can get insurance very cheaply, which has you covered for 30 or 40 years. Um, but if then five <laughs> years later you realize, oh my God, I've got cancer now, then it's too late, you're not gonna get any insurance, and you're most likely not gonna get a chronic suspension. <coughs> Um, so there's a couple of things to, uh, to keep in mind. Uh, one thing which I want to mention first is it's always good to have like one local insurance agent in the country who uh, knows cryonics, uh, who's favorable towards it. Rudy Hoffman in the US is an obvious example. We have Chris Morgan in the UK or Udo for Germany. Uh, the advantage for that is that they know the pitfalls of cryonics. They, uh, know how to best make it work, how to make it seamless, uh, that there's not any problem with it being recognized by Alcohol CI. And there may be an additional advantage. Uh, I mean, this is up to the person, but uh, Udo, for example, very graciously volunteered to uh, donate the proceeds uh, from the insurance uh, to Koranics in Germany. So that in a way, it's then not run for profit, right? But everybody who signs up to his insurance company what he gets as commission, he donates uh, to German Chronics. So in that way, uh, everybody profits. Another important thing uh, to keep in mind is that the insurance really works. And this is also a good example for having somebody local who knows the market. Um, one thing which is important is that uh, insurance is transferred to the provider in such a way that it's protected from next of kin. Uh, because as we've seen in Ted Williams' case and in many other cases, uh, 
it's a large sum of money, and people, when they, well, people tend to be greedy, right? So the spouse might say, okay, why am I being left with so little? Whereas uh, the farmers company is being paid a huge amount of sum from an insurance, so they might try to seize the money for, uh, from the insurance. So it's very important to make sure that this can't be the case. There's other considerations to keep in mind, especially around taxes and inheritance law. Uh, so for example, Udo uh, clarified with the insurance company that uh, no taxes need, needs to be paid on the insurance amount, which is of course very important because if you set up an insurance over, let's say, uh, 100,000 euros for Alcon Europe preservation, and then it gets paid out, and only 60,000 is left after taxes, it wouldn't be sufficient. And so Udo was able to clarify through the insurance company that because the money is being used for services rendered, and these services have been uh, yeah, uh, requested before the time of death, that uh, no, uh, no sort of uh, taxation or inherited tax gets charged on the insurance. Um, and this again is an advantage of having like a single point of contact because Udo sort of says, you know, I bring you all these promises and so the insurance company says, okay, that's really cool. This guy's bringing uh, a new innovative and maybe growing field of business to us so they're more likely uh, to expand the research. And I actually saw some of the letters, they even have like their internal back office, uh, the, um, the specific departments look at that and give us good advice for, uh, usable for trials. So what the advice we can give from our experience in Germany is find somebody in your country who knows about insurance, who can sell you insurance, and uh, who is willing to clarify the legal aspects and um, to work together with the chronics uh, provider. This helps uh, make the process much better for uh, the chronicists who are signing up because they know they, there will be no problem with the recognition of the insurance. And we can say that <coughs> we set us up like two years back. It's been a real success story. Uh, we've basically uh, almost doubled the me uh, Chronics membership in Europe, uh, sorry, in uh, Germany, with uh, by making this sort of seamless, easy service uh, available. So many members had before said, oh, it's just as you have, so where do you get the insurance? How do I set up a contract? We said, we'll help you with it. We'll make sure you get the right finance. We'll make sure to help uh, you with uh, the, um, uh, with all the paperwork, and yeah, we've actually got a couple of people in the room who uh, use this service and uh, are now signed up promises. So yeah, that's it from my side. Thanks. How, a lot how many members do you have right now in Germany? Uh, so altogether, there's uh, I think around twenty-five to thirty people oh. which are signed up. Um, <coughs> around ten with Alco, the rest with CI and around uh, mm -hmm. about 10 came uh, through this insurance package which we uh, set up. Um, kind of, um, someone from, the, uh, from Spain get insurance through you or is it really better to have someone in Spain? And in that case, do you have a uh, contact in Madrid that could mm -hmm. help us? Um, the situation is, is better. You check the situation in, in Spain. <coughs> then the, uh, what is the, the law? The law the law is different. So it's very important that uh, you check uh, how want the insurance, how is the law, and mixed and looked exactly for your opposition here in uh, Spain. So it's better um, you check the situation in Spain. We actually have a couple yeah, of requests yeah. internationally. We are thinking about them, uh, but it's better for you, you make the situation <laughs> in your country. For example, for, yeah. for Udo's insurance, you need residence in mm -hmm. Germany. And I remember uh, I was also in contact with Chris Morgan from the UK mm -hmm. insurance, and he looked into getting some sort of international portable solution. He said, you know, this is the EU, or this is the city. <laughs> no, <right. laughs> in, this, in this case, no. And uh, it should be easy to transfer, but it turned out that insurance regulation is like, so local. So I think every country probably needs to have their own person. And you said uh, you need um, um, to be living in uh, Germany for that uh, insurance. Okay. You need to have a postal address where mail can come. Okay. Yeah. And, and what if, if, if you um, move to Switzerland, for example? Um, I think in that, case, uh, yeah, in that case, the insurance company would uh, sort of honor its pre standing uh, agreement. I, I, I don't uh, do you know. Uh, if, like, let's say if I were to move to a different country, uh, 
would, uh, would I still be able to maintain my insurance? So, German bank account, which I think he would keep, and yeah, it's, uh, he says German address as well. So, I think I'd probably take that of uh, my parents oh, and my brothers. Change, right? And the, the, the bank account is a more important one. Mm -hmm. so, uh, okay, let's take it one by one. Yeah, so life insurance itself is a kind of a hack to pay for chronic, so I'm wondering uh, how you could hack that setup. Uh, so for instance, if you're saying you need a postal address in Germany, what, what prevents me of just getting a mailing box at one of the post offices just across the border? Yeah. I mean, I think there's lots, uh, I mean, you can be creative about this and I think you can make it work. However, it's also often good because this regulation is like so much tied to individual countries. Um, let me give you an example. Rudy Hoff offers to give uh, insurance to anybody in the world. They just need to come to the US, do like the blood tests and uh, health checks. Um, I, have, I didn't do that because I said, okay, you know, I'm not, I won't be living there, at least for the foreseeable future. So what if laws change? What if uh, there is some sort of... Um, yeah, uh, legal Trump. dispute. <laughs> <laughs> but if something happens, then I won't be there. It'll be hard to claim my interest, right? So it's always easier when you're within the country uh, where you're set up. That being said, if there's like a small country with just a few people, it might be worthwhile to look into getting cross-border insurance. Exactly, Bruder points out it's also you know, very important to make sure that this, uh, the insurance is really safe for the chronics provider, that nobody else can access it. And that sort of thing is always easier to control if you've got somebody like, you know, within the local uh, jurisdiction. You must clear this before, not after. So, uh, David, I think that's all you yeah, I, was, I was just going to add uh, that I've asked Chris Morgan this question, and for the UK at least, uh, you can leave after you take out your insurance policy and it will remain valid. But I think the key thing is you do have to be resident at the time rather than just on a holiday. And you probably do need to maintain a UK <coughs> bank account. Well, I mean, I wouldn't like to take the risk of sort of just going somewhere for a day and then they don't pay out because they, they realize you weren't oh, No, no, resident. I mean, certainly like holidays, it's just like if you permanently move your place of residence. Yeah, if you were resident, yeah, exactly. If you were resident at the time, you took out the policy and then you leave later, that's okay. Okay, great. You know. In the UK, anyway. Yeah. Um, so I think Nico and then Ashley. Um, how easy or difficult is it uh, to change the beneficiary of the insurance policy? Uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> we haven't done it yet. Basically, Alcoy and uh, the CI give you a document, a sort of a buyback agreement that they pledge if you dissolve your contact, they will absolve you from uh, having the insurance uh, transferred to them. So we would need to get that document from them, then show that to the insurance company. So the insurance company says, okay, this is with the, uh, Alco agrees to this, or CI, and then uh, move the insurance to another company. So I think it's not gonna be ridiculously difficult, but we don't have any practice. People don't tend to change chronic providers unless it's like very, uh, important reason policy. Uh, how does that work with the uh, the German policies? Like, is there a distinction between owner and beneficiary? And can you also make the insurance, uh, uh, the Kranix organization, the owner of it? Yes. Uh, um, so I think both things work. With my original insurance company, I just made Alco the irrevocable beneficiary, mm -hmm. and Alco accepted that. There was a bit of to and fro, but mm -hmm. we got it through because the insurance company wasn't willing to transfer ownership. Right. I think uh, Udo with uh, the VKB insurance, they uh, yeah. yeah. So there the ownership is actually transferred, the insurance company actually prefers that. It was something around tax reasons which made it uh, even easier for them to transfer ownership instead of making it irrevocable. <coughs> right, because I know like one reason why Alcor prefers that is that yeah, they yeah. get the correspondence involving oh, the insurance yeah. and if there's like any issue, the then then Elcor knows about it no, when, you're, when you're funding I remember that, yeah. yeah. When I did the first, with the first insurance with the irrevocable change of beneficiary, yeah. 
I also have to have them uh, sort of sign that they would uh, send all correspondence to Alco as well, which didn't fit well with the internal processes, so that's yeah, what yeah. took so long. Okay, and regarding to the marketing, uh, how do you sell the, the product, the, the insurance uh, product? Uh, do you sell directly from the Korean examiner and you offer the, the insurance policy, or do you offer the insurance <coughs> policy first and then you talk about the client service? Okay, and regarding to the marketing, uh, how do you sell the, the product, the, the insurance uh, product? Uh, do you sell directly from the Korean examiner and you offer the, the insurance policy, or do you offer the insurance policy first and then you will talk about the client service product. Congress then makes a couple of proposals on uh, what would be the uh, prices for these different uh, uh, yeah. different offers. Okay, one more. Yes. Are, are you aware of any catastrophic stories where someone had uh, <coughs> the right amount of life insurance in place but for some administrative unforeseen reason uh, it was not paid up and the suspension was I think I just saw Max enter <laughs> and uh, this year as well, so I think that's uh, maybe we can address the question to them. Uh, Max, have there been any cases? Sorry to put you on the spot. Have there been any cases where in the insurance, where there was like an insurance setup, but then the patient uh, deanimated and the insurance didn't pay up?
family members, and uh, they don't know a whole lot about grounding, but they do realize that if you hide it from like the or the CI, then there's a much bigger chance that if like, these heroes might be able to go to death. So, yeah, that's right. actually, that's a real, that's, yeah. that's why uh, I also try to preserve myself in any circumstances, because that takes away incentive for the family to interfere, because it would be like trying to preserve me only if you can get access uh, to my, uh, Remains within 24 hours. <laughs> you just like rock the door, <laughs> and wait for a year, uh, wait for a, a day, and they say, "Okay, sorry, I'll do nothing for you to do. I guess the insurance goes to us." We're going to do it because mm -hmm. then I get so some of the money. Yeah. The motivation is the same. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thanks to you again, uh, Thorsten and Udo, for stopping in.